Good morning. I am Dr. Shrija, Assistant Professor in the De Department of Economics, School of Distance Education, University of Kerala. You might have heard about different theories of consumer behavior. Today, we are going to examine an important theory of consumer behavior, which is known as indifference curve analysis. First, let us examine who in introduced this uh, theory of consumer behavior. The credit for introducing this theory of consumer behavior goes to uh, J.R. Hicks and R.G.D. Allen. Uh, they, for the first time, they developed this theory as a scientific and systematic uh, manner, and uh, they made this theory a, a powerful tool of analysis. Like all other theories in economics, this theory, indifference curve analysis, is also based on a set of assumptions. Now let us see what are the important assumptions of indifference curve analysis. The first assumption is consumer is rational. What do you mean by that consumer is rational? A consumer is always trying to maximize his satisfaction for given level of income and given market prices. Here it is also implied that consumer is using all the information available to uh, maximize his satisfaction. He is using all knowledge available to maximize his satisfaction. That is meant by the first assumption. Second assumption is utility is ordinal. What do you mean by ordinality of utility? In uh, the previous theory of consumer behavior, we assume that utility is cardinal. That means utility <coughs> can be measured. But in the indifference curve analysis, we assume that utility is ordinal. That means we can only order or rank utilities. We cannot measure utility. We can only order or rank utilities. We can say that utility derived from, uh, derived from consuming an apple is greater than utility derived from consuming an orange. Only in that way, we can order or rank utilities. Then this theory is based on a very important assumption of assumption that the, uh, there is the operation of the law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. What do we mean by uh, diminishing marginal rate of substitution? Here uh, uh, we, uh, we consider the case of only two commodities, uh, say for example x and y, and we also assume that there is limited substitutability between x and y. And we, uh, we can see that when the according to this theory, when the consumer consumes more and more units of uh, one particular commodity, say for example X, uh, he is willing to give up less and less units of uh, Y. Hmm? That, that is known as that is the rate the sacrifice ratio goes on diminishing, or the rate at which one commodity is substituted for the other goes on diminishing as we move along an indifference curve that you will see later when I draw the indifference curve. So just quantity of commodities consumed. Total utility is a function of quantity of Q1, Q2, Q3 up to Qn consumed. So this is a simple assumption. You might have understood the meaning. Uh, then uh, the last assumption, the last assumption is consistency and transitivity of choice. First, let us ex examine what is meant by consistency of choice. Let us uh, take the case of two combinations A and B. Then, once the consumer prefers A to B, he will never prefer B to A. That is the meaning of consistency assumption. That is, once the consumer prefers a consumption bundle, that is accurate once he prefers a consumption bundle A, then he will never prefer B to A. That is the assumption of consistency. Now let us see what is meant by transitivity assumption. Let us assume that there are three combinations, three consumption bundles are available to the consumer. Let them be A, B and C. Then if A is preferred to B and if B is preferred to C, then consumer always prefers A to C. This is the transitivity assumption. So indifference curve analysis is based on all these assumptions. Now let us examine what is meant by an indifference curve. So uh, indifference curve is based on an indifference schedule. First of all, let us examine what is meant by an indifference schedule. An indifference schedule shows various combinations of two commodities. Uh, that give the same level of satisfaction to the consumer or it shows different combination, uh, combinations of two commodities which are equally acceptable to the consumer. Uh, now let us have a look at the indifference schedule. Uh, 
uh, see this uh, in the schedule you can see different combinations there are five combinations a b c d e and d so a, uh, the first combination a shows a combination of 25 units of good x and uh, five units of good y uh, similarly b shows a combination of 15 units of uh, x and seven units of y and one important thing that you can see is that all these combinations whether it is a or b or c or uh, all these combinations uh, give the same level of satisfaction to the consumer that is the utility derived from all these combinations remains the same that is why i have noted it as u the utility remains the same consumer uh, the level of satisfaction associated with all these combinations remain the same now let us draw this in different schedule in the graph paper that is we are plotting uh, points along the x axis as a convention we always take uh, commodity y along the x axis and commodity y is taken along the y axis uh, then we, we we are plotting different combinations hmm? uh, so first combination a second combination b irrespective of the combination utility remains the same uh, whether the uh, as the consumer moves along different points on the different curve, there is no change in the level of utility, utility remains the same. Now, let us uh, examine another concept which is known as indifference map. What is an indifference map? From the diagram, you can see that it is a set of indifference curve. I see one is the lowest indifference curve in this diagram, I see two, I see three and I see 4. What is the peculiarity of this indifference map? Along I see 1, the level of satisfaction remains the same. When, however, when the consumer moves from a lower indifference curve to a higher indifference curve, what happens to the level of satisfaction? Will it remain the same? No. As he moves from a lower indifference curve I see 1 to I see 2, the level of satisfaction increases. How, however, you should remember that when the consumer moves along different points on the same indifference curve, there is no change in the level of satisfaction. But when the consumer moves from a lower indifference curve to a higher indifference curve, the level of satisfaction increases. So, in an indifference map, see different indifference curves are there. And I see 1, I see 2, I see 3. When See these two combinations A, B, when the consumer moves from this combination to this combination, there is no change in the level of satisfaction. However, when he moves to this point, that is when there is a movement from B to C, there is an increase in the level of satisfaction. Consumer uh, moves from a lower indifference curve to a, a higher indifference curve. So, what will be the attitude of all consumers? We will always try to move towards this direction we will always try to reach the uh, the highest indifference curve possible ah, now let us uh, examine what are the important properties of indifference curve uh, you might be able to uh, list out the important properties of indifference curve what are the important properties see from the graph you have seen that indifference curve has a negative slope what does it mean as we increase the consumption of commodity x we have to reduce the consumption of y because utility or satisfaction has to uh, remain the same so once we increase the consumption of x uh, the consumption of y is to be reduced so that it, that it has a negative slope and indifference curves are convex to the origin uh, the underlying principle is the law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution because of the assumption of the law of diminishing marginal rate of substitution uh, indifference curves are convex to the origin we can prove that mathematically also i am not going into that details now and as i have already mentioned higher indifference curve represents higher level of satisfaction and indifference curve never indifference curves never intersect with each other why 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 i said so what is the reason because each level of indifference curve uh, represents a given level of satisfaction. If two indifference curve me meet with each other, that means at that point of intersection, there are two levels of utility or two levels of satisfaction that is logically inconsistent. So, uh, no two indifference curves intersect with each other and from the diagram, you, you might have seen that they never touches, uh, they never touch x or y axis. 
then let, let, let us examine another concept uh, which is a very important concept uh, which is related to the equilibrium of the consumer. What do we mean by equilibrium of the consumer? You might be knowing that equilibrium, what is the word meaning of equilibrium? Equilibrium means that is a state of rest. When the consumer achieves a state of rest, then he maximizes his satisfaction. So, equilibrium refers to a situation where the consumer maximizes his satisfaction for given level of income and given market prices of commodities. Now, all we know that as consumers we are always trying to reach the maximum satisfaction as possible, but what is the constraint? We are always trying to reach the highest indifference curve, but what is the constraint? It is the budget constraint, it is the constraint imposed by income. So, budget line shows, we, we let us examine another tool which is known as budget line which shows the constraint. So, the definition of budget line is given, it shows different combination of two commodities that the consumer can buy at various, uh, for a given, sorry, for a given level of income and given market prices of commodities and you can, and you can have the, you can see the equation equation for budget line here also we assume that there are only two commodities the consumer is spending his whole amount or spending his entire income for purchasing two commodities alone what are they from this equation you can easily identify what are they only two commodities x and y hmm? the consumer is spending the whole amount we as for the sake of simplicity in this analysis we assume that the consumer is spending the whole amount for uh, purchasing two commodities x and y from the equation you can see that m m is the money income money income means income in monetary terms income is equal to p x into q x plus p y into q y where p x is the price of you can read that p x is the price of x so so, this is the budget constraint. So, uh, this is the graphical presentation of the budget line. Graphical, uh, see here, uh, how, how do we reach the extreme points A and B? We assume that if uh, the whole money income is spent for purchasing Y alone, then M by, M by P Y is equal to O A. And when we assume that the whole amount is spent for purchasing X alone, then B O B is obtained by dividing M by P X. So, within uh, these two extreme points, we have different combinations of two commodities X and Y, which yield the same level of uh, 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 which uh, the consumer can purchase for uh, a given level of income. Then, now let us examine the conditions for consumer's equilibrium. There are two con con conditions for consumer's equilibrium. First condition is also known as the necessary condition for consumer's equilibrium and second is the sufficient condition. Uh, first condition is also known as first order condition of consumer's equilibrium. Um, first, con first condition is that marginal rate of substitution between x and y should be equal to the price ratio. Uh, here you, you have to remember one thing, see the slope of the indifference curve is the marginal rate of substitution between two commodities x and y and slope of the budget line shows the price ratio p x by p y. The, so, that is the first condition and mathematically it can be shown that marginal rate of substitution between x and y is the ratio of marginal utilities m u x by m u y because of the shortage of time I am not going into that details. So, just remember that this is the first condition and second condition indifference curve should be convex to the origin. Now, let us have the graphical presentation of consumers equilibrium. So, we have uh, a set of uh, indifference curve. Here we are draw, drawing two analytical tools in the same diagram. Uh, we are drawing indifference map and at the same time we are drawing budget line also into this diagram. And uh, here see the consumer as I have already mentioned consumer is always trying to reach the highest possible indifference curve. And what is the constraint? Constraint is imposed by the budget line. So, equilibrium is reached at the point where here the point is denoted as E at the point where uh, the budget line is tangent to the highest possible indifference curve. So, e equilibrium point is E where the slope of the budget line is exactly equal to the slope of the indifference curve. So, first condition is satisfied that is uh, at the point